Hey there, and welcome to your Intuitive Edge Premium Membership. This is module number four, part four. This is Mercury Retrograde in Scorpio and Libra. So in part four here, in module four, we are shifting out of the Mars retrograde material and into the Mercury retrograde material. So we've been in the setup phase for the Mercury retrograde, the, the one that's coming up now, as I teach this, it's October 6th. In one week, on October 13th, Mer Mercury will officially go retrograde, but we've been in the setup phase uh, since um, September. Uh, in fact, something to consider that the, the setup phase has been kind of amping up and, and laying down its tracks um, since September 23rd. So as we enter into this, this part, what I'm going to do is, of course, lay down all the dates, the stats, show you the graphs, look at the timing. And I just want to mention something very, very interesting. I mean, I always teach about how astrology is a tool of synchronicity, right? Well, check out this synchronicity. Mercury stations retrograde October 13th. That is the same day, if you remember, that Mars retrograde hits its midpoint, synchronicity number one. So just as Mars gets to its midpoint, halfway through its retrograde cycle, the same exact day Mercury goes backward. It's going to matter. Of course, I'm going to tell you all about it. And Mercury stations direct on November 3rd which is our election day in the United States. Just saying. So, hello. <laughs> we have some things to talk about. But I just wanted to throw that out there to you because it's really phenomenal how oftentimes these, these dates line up to actual events you know, happening in our lives. I have a feeling that around October 13th, there's going to be some, some stuff going down. Just saying. And also, not only that, I'm jumping ahead here, but I'm going to go through this all over again. On October 16th, we have a new moon in Libra. So that's interesting to look at as well, which I'll talk more about in part part five when we get to the next layer that I'm going to do in part five of this particular cycle. So let's just bring back into the room, speaking of Mars retrograde, that this Mercury retrograde is in fact happening inside of the Mars retrograde. Now, this is where we really need to recruit the holographic sort of astrolabe perspective that all the cycles interact and interrelate together. So it's really important for you to take a minute and go, okay, what's happening, what's been setting up, what's been happening in the Mars retrograde. Now think back to September 23rd when the Mercury retrograde set of phase began. And just look at, I always you know, offer you these, these markers in culture because then it helps you reference yourself because the archetypal dynamics while maybe perhaps collective, are also personal, both and. So if you're ever feeling like, I'm not quite getting what the archetypal dynamics of this cycle are about, look to manifested events in the world. This is what the ancients did. This is exactly how they mapped out this tool of astrology, is they just looked at what's happening in their lives and how that correlated in synchronicity with the movement of the planets. So we're just doing it now in an archetypal quantum and intuitive age where we know we're really operating through the principle and psychic law of synchronicity when we look at these things. And we can use this as a way to understand the meaning, the karmic connections, and also our soul contract with it all. And as we get into some deeper layers, because we are bringing in two archetypes here with this Mercury retrograde, we have primarily Scorpio. So you're, you're going to see me talk a lot about Scorpio, the Scorpio archetype, but we do have Libra here. Now, if you were with me a year ago, I actually did, this is back before the membership, so I did things differently. And I got to tell you, I love having the membership now because of exactly what I'm going to be able to do with you in this part. I can take where we've been and keep layering it out for you and, and deepening the nuances for you and really getting it more specific for you in your life and archetypally land more material than I ever could in the way I used to do these series. It really preparing for this was really actually a treat because I could hold the, the hologram more in front of me and then begin to download from there in a way that I would, it is kind of new. 
you know, back when I was just teaching these, mo- these, these cycles, it would be like, okay, you're going to take this cycle. And then I started adding on bonus courses. So a year ago, I did Mercury was retrograde completely in Scorpio. And I did this bonus course for it called Evolve or Repeat. Now that's still available on my website. You can go get it if you if it interests you. And, and if you want to go deeper into uh, like a, an additional course around um, working with emotional alchemy. Because what Scorpio does become about as an archetype is about your the emotional side of your psyche. But not just that, it is about the emotional side of your psyche as it inter, interacts with other people. And, the, and it's about the shadow. It's about the shadow side of the emotional side of the human psyche. So I'm going to get into a lot of uh, connections here and why I sense Libra and what Libra's role is in this. And what I want you to first enter into this part with as just kind of as a way to see it is that what we're, what we're doing here is we're looking at a, at a process. Whenever you get two astrological archetypes in a Mercury retrograde or any retrograde really, but most notably a Mercury retrograde, you, you then have to look at, well, what's the process that Libra and Scorpio together are about? You know, I think I've taught this many times, certainly if you've taken my advanced astrology, like my Soul Destiny's Home Study or something, you know this already, that each of the astrology signs and their archetypes follow the other in a sequence. And it's a sequence that maps human psychological, human psycho-spiritual, and human mystical development brilliantly. But it is a sequence, just like anything growing has a sequence of growth, we do as well. And the um, zodiacal archetypes speak to that. So when you go from Libra to Scorpio, there is a shift in growth and evolution that happens there. And that shift is what frames this Mercury retrograde. But more specifically, it is also happening, obviously, in context to everything else that's going on. So it it drills down into more specificity for our now, for our present dynamics, our present present um, karmic challenges. And let's remember, all retrogrades are about a chaos cycle of disintegration, getting disorganized in some area of our lives, this time both a little Libra Scorpio area. And it is about kind of the disorganization, dismantlement of a system in us that is ready to be upgraded more in a new system that operates more holistically. So we're looking at what we're going through now, both collectively and personally, as a call to investigate and come into new systems that honor our holism more and the holism obviously of all of life. So remember that's the main driver of, of astrology. And I think of growth of life. It's a mystical principle that life itself is threaded to uh, and forever will be holism. All is one. So this retrograde goes, okay, we've got to go to your shadow. Remember, all retrogrades, especially this one, because it's Hermes, who is psychopompous in, in, in mythology. This is the archetype that takes you right into the underworld. So Hermes now taking us into this underworld part of ourselves to look at not only Scorpio, but also Libra and their process, which I'm, I'm going to explain, obviously, all of this to you and what it means in context to the now, to where everything is at in the karmic field. Now, let's speaking of which, let's remember, and I think it's becoming increasingly more and more clear that we are entering into a time where, and are in a time where we have to understand our role within karma. The karma that is bigger than us, the karma that is absolutely connected to us, but is still bigger than us, the karma that is actually has a lot to do with what we choose, what we, what the actions we take, the patterns we're in. That's what we mean by karma. Remember this Capricorn activation that's really present 
in Saturn and Capricorn, Pluto and Capricorn, and Mars squaring those planets in Aries, Mars and Aries squaring those planets, that energy is still here. Now what's happening is Hermes steps in and says, okay, now that I have your, now that Mars has your attention, I've got to show you another level and layer of the karma Mars has already got you looking at. And now we're going to go to, because this is Hermes, this is, this is Mercury, this is your mind. We're going to go to the shadow side of your mind, its processes, and we're going to look at the emotional, psycho-spiritual territory that exists in you that's connected to all this karma. We've got to go into Scorpio's layer and then un try to understand the pivot from there why you have the relationships in your life that you do. This is Libra. And now coming back to Mars and Aries and where are you called to a rebellion? So it's interesting for me as a teacher and as an intuitive to, to bring this layer forward because obviously in Mars, I covered a lot of things, <laughs> right? And there's even more. There's even a, a more specific teaching here and instruction that because of how I'm doing this in the membership now, I can walk into and pull out and go, okay, let's go to this next level of Hades in you that you didn't know of, but is connected to your Mars process. So remember, this is a holographic kind of way to see. And that means what's in you is in the whole. Mercury retrograde in the sky is retrograde in you. Now, speaking of which, let's, let's cover some of Mercury's, you know, process um, astronomically when it goes retrograde. It goes retrograde every three and a half months or so for about 20 to 22 days, depending. And when it gets to its midpoint, which is when, in this case, Mercury joins the sun in the sky, that's kind of the midpoint, that's the midnight point of the dark night that the cycle is offering. And if you think about it, I say dark night, but it's really a point of light. It's a point of revelation. And that, you know, Mercury joining the sun in the sky at that time symbolizes that in synchronicity. Like there's this point of revelation ahead. Of course, I'm going to give you the dates on all that shortly. But when Mercury goes retrograde, we are all called to kind of put our mind aside. And one of the things that I really have to lay down now, because and I've never, I've never gone to this layer before, but it kind of, it was stalking me all week in my own sort of process of downloading and feeling through the field and getting a sense of what's happening, what's happening next. I realized that this retrograde will have all of us in our own way looking at something. And that is how does your mind become corrupted? Corruption is actually a Scorpio issue. And so I want you to, just for now, think about when I say the word corrupt or corruption, what comes up for you? There's nothing right or wrong. It's just what, 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 what does that word summon forward in your mind? And what we fail to realize because we're such a mentalized culture and we've put so much power and staked so much power in the mind, which is evidenced in spiritual teachings to how we all kind of throw around slogans on Facebook and Instagram and, you know, and, and how we just assume that, you know, we can just choose and that our, our mind is sharp and our mind is healthy when in fact your mind can get sick. So what you will be evaluating in yourself, and I've never instructed people to look at this this way, is how does your mind get sick, corrupted? How does, how does your mental process skew in a way that divorces you from what's true, that keeps you in a story, keeps you in a certain kind of relationship? How do you know? And this is the tricky thing about the sick mind. How do you know if your mind's sick? How do you know that? What are the markers that tell you, you know what? You're off here. Your, your, your thought processes are corrupted. These are not integral ways 
to perceive, think, or process reality. So all of us are in some orb of mental illness, if you will. I, I, I really mean this. Now, obviously, I don't say that lightly or to take away from those that are clinically mentally ill. But when you have a culture that suffers from, if you will, mental illness, which ours does, a shame-based culture, of course, is going to have issues with mental illness. How can you think that somehow you're not also sick in the mind? Now, I'm going to explain and give you the archetypal backdrop of where that actually is coming from and how I want you to apply it to yourself. Because this for me was pretty profound, this insight. And what I'll just put on the map for now, and this is what Mercury retrogrades actually, I think, inspire, <laughs> summon, is they summon your soul. And I want you now to just play with this, what I, I feel is a truth, that your soul is not your mind. So when someone, for example, is in addiction, and their mind has become, bit by bit, so corrupted by the addiction, the addiction pattern, by the way that they're trying to handle and process their trauma through the addiction. It starts to become, certain things be, start to become normalized in the mental illness of addiction. And when you enter into a recovery program, one of the common things, if you're in a, re a recovery program worth its salt, that you will see is it must be addressed pretty early on in recovery that your mind is sick. Your thinking is sick. It's addict thinking. Now, I'm, I'm starting to thread some things here I want you to start to feel. All right, addict thinking. What's codependent thinking like? What's coward thinking like? What is bully thinking like? I mean, what we're after here, of course, let's bring it back to the archetypes. But now we want to connect them to the mind. How do archetypes in your system operate in a way that if you now understand the mind, function in ways that are that are kind of sick? And sick, I mean, I mean, no shame in that word. It's more a technical way to understand my thinking is out of integrity. It's out of a certain anchor in the soul outside of that. It's outside of any sense of all is one holism. I'm not seeing the true karmic forces in play. I am in, and so there's, 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 you know, there's various um, things that help keep us sick in our head. Lying, denying, avoidance, projection. Now, a lot of this is going to become a theme, if not already is, in your life. And remember, this is the thing about all retrogrades. <laughs> all of them take you to what you don't know about yourself. Most notably, Mercury retrogrades. So what you think it might be is probably not the full story and possibly may not be the truth at all. And this is the interesting paradox of assessing one's own mental illness one's own dysfunction mentally is that we have to use the, the mind as one of our primary perceptual devices, you know, apparatus, right? So how do you get a sick mind to see its sick self? <laughs> and that's where I got to say, okay, you can't really do that. That's where we need the eyes of the soul. That's where we need, uh, even if, if nothing else, a sponsor, a sponsor in recovery is someone who's, let's say, managed their addict mind enough to where they can know when they're in the orb of addict thinking, sick thinking. And then they can sponsor some clairvoyance for another addict and call them out when they enter into sick thinking. So just riffing around here a little bit, just with some baselines for you, any time that you think you're not enough, that's sick thinking because it's not true. Any time you think you have the power to go control someone, 
That's dysfunctional thinking because that's not true. So you see what I'm saying? Like we each have an orb of this. We're going to come back to the subject of corruption and self-corruption and mental corruption and corruption at large later. But as we enter into this particular retrograde, there's some themes here that are going to be all up in your face. One, because Libra is involved, we are going to be taking, and I'm going to encourage you to start doing a little inventory already, a deep look at your relationships. Now, remember, this is all happening in context to Mars. So I want to bring back, hey, I gave you five steps to rebellion. Those are still in the room. But if you went to step one, which was knowing your values, it's kind of where this retrograde really zeroes in because Venus, which represents your values and your psyche as an archetypal force, rules Libra in astrology. And one of the dynamics of Libra's journey as an archetype, which we're covering in November because you guys voted up to do this solar path of archetypes. So, okay, it's coming. But one of the dynamics of Libra in its archetypal growth and path is learning how to relate to other people. There's the other in Libra, but also relating to the other is always a way to be mirrored back into your own self-relationship. And in both self-relating and relating to others, this is where we sift through our values. What matters to me? Who matters to me? And not only that, this is where values really matter. How do our values direct our choices? Now, there's a stereotype around Libra that you've heard. I'm sure they're indecisive. They can't make up their mind, all this bullshit. But I had to tell you, there's a thread, you know, a lot of stereotypes that circulate come from a thread of something real. They just go off on their own little adventure. And the thread of what's real for the Libra archetype, and that's going to matter in this retrograde, is that when it comes to choices in your life. Now remember, you're getting retrograded here. So you're going to be reviewing your historical choices. You're going to be reviewing uh, your, and let's just break that down a little bit. Choices in who you relate to, choices in relationships you've created, choices in how you relate to yourself, choices in your daily life, choices in your politics, choices in your self-care. You see what I'm saying? Choices, karmic choices. Every choice you will ever make and refuse to make will carry a karma. It's just an equation that's technical. So this retrograde back to karmic inventory is deepening you into a new area that says, okay, now we got to understand the psychic resources you're connected to, Scorpio, the emotional resources you're connected to, Scorpio, your own personal sense of shadow process, Scorpio, the process, shadow process of others in your life, Scorpio. And we've got to understand how all that, and I'm not done with that list, but for now, that's good. How all of that now relates to what do you choose? What have you chosen? What have we chosen? And here's the, here's the lesson in Libra. And I would have to say also Scorpio, but Scorpio handles this lesson in a very um, combustible way at times. The nature of, of our journeys, our destinies, is that we don't get to where we are meant to go. We do not live out our fullest potential without needing other people. We are wired to relate. It's part of our soul contracts. It is part of being human. It's actually part also of just plain survival. You will not survive this life without the help of others. Let me say it a different way. You need other people, whether you like it or not. Oftentimes our trauma 
really doesn't like that. And we spend a lot of our lives defending that truth that we need other people. You know, I don't want to need other people. I want to be self-sufficient. I want to be on my own. Well, sorry, you're in a grid of creation, which means you're connected in a grid to everything. Now, there's rolling with that consciously and in soul esteem, or there's crash and burn lessons to learn types of relationships, which we all have had. And there's a deeper context here. Because remember, what this, what this Mercury retrograde is saying is, okay, let's come back to are you in the true or false rebellion? How do you know? We're back in this, we're back in these steps that I gave you in the Mars retrograde, right? But now we are being being given new eyes in this Mercury retrograde to see them anew and to see more that we didn't see before. And of course, my best way of taking you into that is archetypal. I, if I can give you an, some archetypal coordinates to use as your metric of perception, you got this. We got this. But what we're going to be negotiating is that sick mind that's going to want to come in, stay with its stories, stay with its tribalism, stay with its wiring, stay with its patterns, and not see karmic truth about ourselves, about others, and not see the archetypal dynamics at play that have put us in a dimension with other people to, yes, learn lessons in relationship. So it's on. And it is dynamic to see where this goes next and what's ahead, certainly by mid-October. Boom, it's crazy. So let's just remember, kind of recap this intro, and we're going to dive in a little deeper into Mercury and a Scorpio Libra archetypes, but I, I got to just have you keep in mind everything I've said in this module so far, parts one, two, and three is still in the room. It's not like we just turn the page and suddenly, well, those five steps of rebellion, check, moving on. No, actually not at all. This is where things get clarified even more through a Libra Scorpio retrograde to Hades journey. All right. So remember, Mars is retrograde started September 9th. It's midpoint coming up October 13th, same day Mercury goes retrograde. And Mars isn't stationing direct until November 13th. And that's 10 days later after Mercury goes direct. So this is a very, you know, and I, I think I've said this before, when I was looking at 2020 back in to December 2019, this time frame for me felt so important and crucial. And when you're dealing with when you're dealing with Scorpio now in the mix, you're dealing with a level of self-sabotage and power that none of the other archetypes in astrology have as a as a terrain to negotiate. You're in the Shadowlands, but it's not to say that Scorpio is only about the shadow per se. It is. It's about transformation. It's about power. It's about our need to psychically and emotionally fuse with other people. There is no opting out of fusion with others. I'm breathing air right now that you maybe have have all, uh, also taken in a month ago. It just finally hit me. You know what I'm saying? So we're, we're all in the soup of life together. Now, I've got to mention one more thing here about Mercury retrogrades, and that is when you don't engage them, or let's say when you don't engage a shadow process in them, which is, okay, Looks something like this. 
I'm going to Hades. Uh, Hermes is here to take me on a little tour through the a little bit of Libra part of my psyche and some Scorp- some serious Scorpio part of my psyche. And if I don't just get in the boat and cross the river Styx, I'm going to end up with a trickster running the show. So a lot of times in you know Mercury retrogrades, you'll see the stereotype of, well, that's just a time period where you know, you might have software crash. <laughs> you might have computers crash. Uh, you might have miscommunications, accidents, blah, 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 blah. But when that stuff happens, that phenomena happens, you know, in the synchronicity of it isn't some superstition. It's rather the trickster is, is a real force. It is something that all cultures around the world have represented in their mythologies and their stories about creation. There's always a trickster somewhere, whether that's a coyote or whether that is Hermes, some kind of shape-shifting truth teller. Now, remember the, the trickster's archetype and its intention isn't just to frack you up and trick you around and get you frustrated for, for not. The trickster activates when you're not willing to engage the truth directly. So the trickster comes in and goes, okay, you won't hear the truth directly. Well, I'm going to have to trick you into it then. Now, how you're tricked into the truth can look very different in, in very different ways. So someone who, let's say, and we're going to get to this. I, I'm really excited about, I got some new teachings coming up here that I love download. It just like reminds me of doing readings when I get these downloads um, that I get every reading I used to do. Let's say that you are someone who is really set in a a certain rigid sense of shame driven perfectionism. And out of that, you create these real brutal standards in your relationships and also with yourself. And you think that's love. You think that's, um, let's say a nourishing connecting expression of love. And what's true is that it's actually not, And not because I'm saying it's not, or someone else is saying it's not, it's not a nourishing true expression of love because it's all based on conditions, be perfect or you're unlovable. So the trickster comes in and says, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set you up. Ooh, I got this with someone that you think, think is perfect per your perfectionist driven standards. Well, I got, I'm going to get you. Okay. You're going to line up on Tinder. You're going to match and swipe and bumblebee and everything. You guys are going to, yep. (laughs) And then you get into a dating dynamic only to find that their aura of perfection was a mirage. Maybe behind the scenes, they're married. Maybe behind the scenes, they're gay. Maybe behind the scenes, they're a drug addict. And you get tricked into this relationship just to show you, hey, I want to take take a pause. What is love to you? A checklist of perfectionist, you know, standards that someone's got to meet to be in your field? Or is it something else? So the, the trickster tricks you into your soul. And I, and I use that example of, of dating because I've seen it happen so many times. With friends, it's happened to me. Um, with clients, where they see they they meet someone, and there's a projection dynamic going on, or illusion going on with the person, where they're not really seeing the person; they're seeing their projection onto the person. They're seeing the image or what the person wants them to see. And if you go deeper, it's not just someone dogged you or you know lied to you about who they were. It's that there's a deeper thread of love trying to happen that falls outside of your thinking. Now, it's a great, I think, doorway to go in to what this retrograde is about. And to just finish my point here, if you don't go into that doorway, well, I can guarantee you, you're going to get some trickery. I can feel in my system when... I've activated the trickster in my, in my, in my house, in my life. I, I can feel when it's there. I've, I've been you know, doing this work for, well, my whole life. But 
And that's just to say that when you get more apprenticed and adept at these cycles and just this archetype, the trickster archetype, you know when it's around. And it does, I promise you this, it oftentimes does really try to speak to you very subtly first. You know, it tries to, to opt you out of the crash and burn lessons to learn relationships or crash and burn lessons to learn choices. But, you know, we're human. We are imperfect. And I think all of us are going to need a little, you know, boost to trickery <laughs> once in a while to get to our truth. But I want you to understand this archetype technically in the true way that it actually operates and its usefulness and how to work with it. And don't get perfectionist about, you know, perf being tricked. It's going to happen. But I promise the more you work with these cycles, the more you work with just this archetype, even in or out of these cycles, you're going to find that it doesn't happen as often. And when it's, when you feel the trickster, it's like a certain, um, to me, it has a certain electricity to it. I can feel when it's a foot. And then I also notice it because shit starts happening with, you know, my tech. Now, why, why tech? Just as a little interesting sidebar. Why tech? Why, why computers? Why, why all these other things, you know, that seem to go awry? Hard, hard drive crashes. Uh, I'm going to speculate a little here. I, 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 I know there's a part, part truth in this, and I can't say it's always true, but I will say that, you know, spirit, the spiritual realm vibrationally is more able to influence tech because electricity, frequencies, cell frequencies, Wi-Fi, you know, all these things start to become uh, within the realm of what it can more easily influence. So if your angels are going to get your attention and they got the trickster on a mission for you, energetically, it's easier for them to say, oh, go hit her cell phone. Oh, go just, this had literally happened to me two nights ago. Or was it last night? It was last night. I'm sitting there watching TV and also half working on this stuff. <laughs> so I've got the trickster all about me. And my TV channel changes on its own. And I, I had to laugh because it, it put me on, I think, some family channel. <laughs> I think there's a synchronicity and message in that for me. I'll maybe share that in part the next part, but if, <laughs> if it fits what I want to cover. Anyway, just something to, I'm speculating a little here. Um, I think I know for sure that, you know, like when my father died, you know, he, he would screw, screw with the, my phone would ring. There'd be no one on the line. I mean, he, there was, I can, I could feel it was him. You can feel so the, the trickster gets into those frequencies, that electricity, the, 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 the things we've engineered as humans that, you know, are, operate at different frequencies. It's just wonderful fodder for the trickster. So I think that's how that, that stereotype and sort of superstition came to be. But I want you to understand beneath that what's true. Now, take a minute. And just reflect on what was happening since September 23rd. And I mean, right now, I mean, really, I say that and I kind of laugh because there are so many things going on that take your pick. <laughs> you know, it's like, what was going on, Robert? Let's see. Now, what I do want you to do is we are going towards Scorpio Libran themes. And we're also, remember, keeping Mars, Aries, Capricorn themes and karmic th themes in the room as well. So if I want you to notice this, let's, let's drill down a little more specifically. Did a lot of what's been kicking up in the Mars retrograde sort of start to take on a little subtle shift, a, 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 a different kind of tone, a different archetypal flavor around September 23rd until now. Now, depending on when you are watching this part, if you're watching on demand, you're still going to track back and evaluate everything just like I asked you to. And just feel it in yourself. Start to notice, and this is what you always want to go for, for the archetypal backbone of a cycle. You want to go for themes. 
And if you get specific triggering that's happening through specific situations and events in your life, fantastic. Get symbolic with it. And when you're working a Mercury retrograde dynamic over, it's not like immediately you know. It's like a dream, you know, if you do any dream analysis. You have to spend some time tending the dream. And similarly, you have to spend some time tending the Mercury retrograde. But what I want you to start to notice is, okay, what's been happening in my relationships? Where am I noticing? Ohado's got me on this five, you know, steps of rebellion. Where am I noticing I'm kind of stuck on a step? Where am I noticing I'm afraid to take a step? Is that with someone or something? What's that about? Where am I noticing that I took a few steps and baby doll, we got some blowback up in here. Okay, cool. And then what? Did you stop walking? Climbing? It's all good. But the retrograde is saying, okay, I've got to give you some more information. There, there's more archetypal data about the potential of your own soul contract, about your own power and powerlessness, about how your mind works, that you've not assessed adequately yet, and that you need to now for the next level of your potential to unfold. And let's go to the we for the next level of your destiny, which is how you serve the we of life to unfold. Now, just look at what's been shifting around in your own experience. This is something, you know, once again, you're going to journal about this. You're going to take some time and reflect on this. This is reflection material. This is a, this is a cue for a reflection. What's been building up? Where have you been noticing? Now, slow yourself down. And next time we'll, we're going to open with a guided meditation. I'm going to guide you through this a little bit. But for now, I just want you to slow yourself down. And that's key in a Mercury retrograde. Absolutely key. Slow down. Slow mo lets you see mo. Okay. <laughs> really. When you slow your system down, slow perception down, slow your mind down, you start to see more. So slow it down and start to reflect. What have I been? Let me let me dial in and activate my intuitive system, my intuitive self. What, what have I been seeing, but not seeing? Because I'm too sped up. Because I'm too in my head. Because I am operating from maladapted thinking. What am I, what am I not seeing? What, what, what's not able to get into my perception? And why? Now, we're going to funnel this into Scorpio Libra territory. But just start there and see where you go before I even get to the funnel. Just start to go, okay, you know, I've been seeing this pattern. I've been noticing this about a certain relationship. I've been noticing that I talk to myself a certain way. I tend to get in thought patterns that kind of go something like this. I'm starting to notice that. It's kind of whispering in my ear. It's kind of saying, hmm. Your soul's going, mm, no, it's time to move on. But we got to evaluate it first. We got to, we got to understand the karmic forces in play. We've got to understand the mental patterns and ways of thinking involved. So Mercury retrogrades are always about disorganizing the ego mind. And then reorganizing it around your optimal potential and your soul's contract, which are really the same thing. And this is about flow charts. So I'm going to give you one more little esoteric thread on what I also have noticed about Mercury retrogrades, especially when it comes to destiny, destiny and flow charts of potential. And then we're going to dive into the stats real quick. So I get those in front of you now. I noticed this, it was an insight I had many years ago, and I've shared it here and there in various Mercury Retrograde series, but 
I feel like it's important this time to bring it back. And that is, we have fate and destiny in this life. These are, these are two pillars of creation. Fate has in it so much. Stuff we can't change, stuff that has karmically built up and become fated, that has to play out. Um, it has just things like time, mortality in it. It has things like birth, death. Uh, you know, fate is also how the you know Earth rotates on its axis and how it orbits the sun. I mean, just things that are kind of put in play that it's like getting dealt a hand of cards. And it is what it is. That's your hand. Destiny is how you're going to play it. How are you going to play that hand? And that's really the most simplistic, but also the most accurate way I can say that. So yet, and I've talked about this in some of my work, my newest work around magic, around flow charts of potential and becoming an X factor, this new emerging, magical, if you will, um, grace that I think some folks, and I'm counting you in as one of them, or you wouldn't be in my classroom, are starting to realize they can activate. But realizing what it takes also to do that. There is a space in, the, in creation that is up for grabs. It, 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 it fills in, it manifests through what we consciously intend or create sometimes. Now, most often, this X factor space just fills in with the known same old karmic momentum that's already been in motion for 200 years, 100 years, 10 years. This retrograde, however, and all Mercury retrogrades function in a unique way in context of what I just told you. And that is this. I want you to image you and the whole world. And that reality, creation itself, operates through the forces of fate and destiny, but there's also X-factor energy as well, which means not everything is, is predetermined. Some is, some isn't. What comes next can be based out of what we decide if we wake up. And also, I mean, there's so much more going on here. Do you, do you channel in, you know, uh, from different grids of power? Do you get a spiritual, spiritual forces in on the mix of what you're up to? Do you stand into your soul self and move in creation from there? This X factor space, you don't activate it and create something new in it through your wounded ego and your trauma and everything that's historical to you that you've been through. This, this X factor space I'm naming now comes from the soul, truly. So back to Mercury retrogrades. When Mercury goes retrograde, I want you to image that, you know, when Mercury is moving direct, when we're in our usual mental thought patterns, when we're in our usual ways that we make decisions and our usual ways of perception, creation is going to move along those lines of force. The retrograde comes in and goes, I'm stopping it. I'm stopping it for a minute. And we're going to give you, not only you, the groups you're part of, the nations you live in, I'm going to give everyone a, a, a moment. We're going to take just a minute here and we're going to calculate the karma of the momentum you've all been in. We're going to calculate that karma and I'm going to serve you up a karmic fact sheet. This is your karma in the Libra Scorpio area of your life. And here's where you've been, and this is where you're likely to go next. How does that feel to you? So when we take this pause, you know, those of you in my classroom that take this pause through my guidance are going to go in and you're going to assess 
different options than a lot of other people will ever in their whole entire lifetime get to. Most people are going to, yeah, they're going to feel the retrograde. They will be in the retrograde with us because this is not some, this is a fate. This is a karmic, cyclical, creative dynamic. And the karma slows up and we're asked to look back at the past through the karma in front of us in the now to understand how it got here and whether or not we want something new. So it's a flow chart shift. That's what I'm trying to say here. This phase, I would say from October to November, is an opportunity, if taken, as a co-creator, as a, a mystic, as a love rebel, as a mystical lover. It's an opportunity, if you take it, to create a different flow chart for your life. And not only that, once again, it's not just you. It's us. So what we do in this retrograde, in these retrogrades, can affect a whole new path that does actually exist. Now, there's some karma baked in that one retrograde alone is not taking, going to chip at. But I'm going to be teaching you in the next part, and I'll be mentioning it a little because I mentioned it right now, about dimensions of experience and how flow charts work. So... You're in a certain dimension of experience. I could say it another way. You're in a certain classroom of learning. You're in a certain arena of your soul contract. You're in a certain um, area of your potential right now. And in this dimension, that's all, let me just bring it all back to, that is a dimension of experience. That is a dimension of living and creating in. This Mercury retrograde is about an inventory of yourself dimensionally so that you can understand how you've been in this dimension, why you're in this dimension of your life and of your potential, and how to move on. So I'm super excited to teach you about that, but I want to start framing where I want to take you. And what's on offer right now for you? That said, let's look at the stats of this retrograde. And let's just remember here that, you know, when you're, when you're in these flow charts, what it takes to get to a new dimension of experience, and I'm just same language, same principles, different language, a new flow chart of potential is a soul shift, a soul shift, S-O-U-L. I'm going to give you some, I've got some things for you guys to, to, to watch, you know, some little homework for the retrograde. Many of you have probably uh, have already seen this movie, but if you want to see a brilliant, brilliant story of shifting flow charts, watch the movie, The Adjustment Bureau. The Adjustment Bureau is actually a Mercury retrograde movie. So I'll explain more about it in the next part and give you a minute to go check it out. It, Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, phenomenal film. I will tell you this. I don't want to, I want you to see it for yourself and see and see what you get out of it. And then I'm going to give you some archetypal coordinates, but I will tell you this, what those characters in that film had to do to change the flow charts they were on. I swear to God, when I saw that movie, I, I thought someone hacked my brain. I'm like, did you hack my, my client files? What, what did you just do? And then pull a Hollywood movie out. I wonder if whoever wrote that actually follows my work. I'm like, really? It was so accurately aligned to how I've learned to see how flow charts of destiny work. But what the two characters must do is they wanna shift their flow chart and they struggle and struggle and struggle and they eventually do shift it, but it's not through their wounded egos. Just my little first hint. All right, we'll come back to that in part, part five. Now, you can shift flow charts. 
Let's just finish with that. And let's look at the flow chart of stats that we're on right now. All right, so here we go. Mercury, retrograde, and Scorpio Libra, starting October 13th through November 3rd, 2020. Of course, this will be in your PDF guide. Now, you'll see there in blue, I have written down, find where this is happening in your own birth chart. Now, if you happen to have a copy of your birth chart, one of the cool things you can do is you can see where the Mercury retrograde is happening in your chart. Now, it's a little more advanced astrology. Let's look at the, the, the degree zone of this retrograde, though. Mercury stations retrograde October 13th at 12 degrees Scorpio. You should be able to see that little squiggly line going all the way up to that purple area is the Scorpio degrees. To just nearly 12, deg 12 degrees Scorpio, we always round up, typically in astrology. And then Mercury goes all the way back to 26 degrees Libra. Now, so on September 23rd, that's when Mercury hit 26 degrees Libra. Now, I did write this in here for you. Mercury uh, in its retrograde is going to move from Scorpio to Libra on October 27th. And that's just to kind of give you a sense of, okay, we've gone through the Scorpio. Now it's time for the Libra shadow territory. And the integration phase works similarly. Mercury moves from Libra to Scorpio on November 10th in its integration phase. Now, let's hold that thought. Let's continue with the actual stats. And this is just to show you, we've got about four degrees of Libra involved here and then 12 degrees of Scorpio. Both matter. Absolutely. And once again, this is about a process. It's the Libra Scorpio process. The midpoint of the cycle, remember that's when the sun and Mercury line up in the sky at three degrees Scorpio. So we've got a Scorpio midpoint, just once again, reemphasizing the Scorpio focus of this retrograde. And that's going to be October 25th. And then on November 3rd, as I mentioned, that is our U.S. election day. Mercury will station direct at 26 degrees Libra. And then from there until November 19th, the whole integration phase unfolds on November 10th and it ends up back in Scorpio and then, you know, moves on its merry way until we have our next retrograde. Now, these dates I think are really striking. One, as I said, Mercury stationing retrograde on October 13th is the same day Mars hits its midpoint. And what I would say, I'm going to come back to the camera now, and I, you guys can reference that obviously in your PDF guide when it's up in the membership. So we're, we've been in this setup phase since September 23rd. Apply that to your personal life. And once again, take a look at culture. Take a look at the political landscape. Take a look at what's happening in the world. All that's been setting up. And as I deepen into the themes, you're going to start to make those connections. Like, oh, there it is. There's the setup happening you know, in, at the White House happening with, for example, um, President Trump catching COVID. Hap I mean, this is synchronicity and it means something. All these, everything happening is in these deeper ways is, is meaning something. So you've got this stuff going on. Now, the journey to the truth of the setup is the retrograde itself. In my senses, this will be triggered by some events. The retrograde itself for us personally, as well as collectively, there's going to be some events around that mid-October time that usher us right down to Hades. So w where you can begin to understand the door to Hades for yourself is by really assessing for yourself what's been active in your field archetypally. Now, to get more specific on that, obviously, I've got to bring in Libra, Arc talk to you about the Libra archetype and the Scorpio archetype and just map them almost a little separately first and then talk about the process that's going to help dial you into that door down to Hades for you. Now, as we kind of turn away from just the stats, I want to start to fill in the content here. Remember, the Mercury retrograde is happening in context to all the cycles, and Hermes was the messenger of the gods. So I always like this image of Mercury retrograde, you know, Hermes giving us a message on behalf of the other cycles, but it's through, this time, the Libra-Scorpio process and archetypes. Now, 
all the cycles matter and that are happening right now. Most notably, we, of course, I've put Mars retrograde on the map. And I would have to also say that, you know, when I did do my, my, my actual, I guess it was like a class course last year, Mercury retrograde in um, Scorpio, which is now evolve or repeat. I think that the clap, the bonus course is actually now just a standalone in my web store, but that content of emotional alchemy is very present in this retrograde. So if you took that last year, if you're someone that, you know, has been following me for a while, you might want to review that course. In fact, I, I definitely think you should I just review it. If you don't have it, you might want to check it out and go get it. However, this year's Mercury retrograde is going to carry a lot of those teachings from that course, but there are a lot of shifts. When I look at like the cycles of special mention, and also I'd say one lunation of special mention, we've got the new moon in Libra coming up on October 16th. I will cover that next time. But I also want to foreshadow something here that's bigger. In December, Jupiter and Saturn move into Aquarius. So part six in this membership is going to be those cycles. So when I do my whole Compass Astrology Overview, um, you know, for 2021, and when I look at the larger cycles of that year, and I always usually do that with the Jupiter, because it's been aligning that way anyway, with the Jupiter cycle, Jupiter retrograde in Aquarius, I'll be covering that in depth. And also Saturn, you guys know when I work with Saturn, buckle in because school is in session. And we, we get down to some serious, hardcore Saturnian uh, content and instruction. But what I want to put on the map for you, speaking of Jupiter and Saturn, going into Aquarius, activating new energies, is that, yeah, this, this is coming up kind of a month, month or two after all this retrograde relay we've been in kind of finishes out. And you know, we went from Venus to Mercury to Mars to Mercury. I mean, just retrograde, everything's just been retrograde 20. And have we not all felt it? I mean, 2020 has been a, a chaos cycle. Like none, none I've ever experienced in my own life. The psychic holographic field of life is just spinning out because the patterns we've been in haven't, are just not sustainable. They're just not. Look at the karma in the room. That said, this retrograde, I think we need to look a little ahead and go, okay, it's a primer of some kind. It is somehow laying some important coordinates archetypally for the Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius that's ahead. Now, I don't want to recruit that cycle in here because we're going backward. This is a retrograde. I just want to put it on your radar that this time is really important because how you meet those cycles will be predicated on the underworld Hades work you do here. Here are some important preliminary questions to ask yourself as we are sitting at the beginning of this Mercury retrograde. And if you don't know the answers, that's fine. I want to put them on the map and I'm going to follow up with a little more robust introduction, perhaps for you, of the Libra and Scorpio archetypes. But what archetypes and patterns have been kind of messing you up lately and keeping you stuck or frustrated or there's a lot of triggering going on? We're, what we're after is an inventory of that area next, but also not just an inventory. We, we got to look at, okay, well, what could be new? What archetypes within the Libra Scorpio territory could take over and now manage how you think, how you perceive, how you feel, how you choose in ways that are Soul directed, soul connected, holographic, holistic, and nourishing for you. So, on one hand, you know, the retrograde is going to take you to that midnight point, down to Hades, even a bit deeper than we already have been. But it's not just to go sit in the shadow with, with a bunch of fire breathing dragons, it's to hug those dragons, but also get the treasure behind them. What are they guarding? They're guarding some important part of your grace, your power, your clarity, your truth, 
the truth. So the Mars retrograde themes around Aries and Capricorn, remember I talked in terms of that being very karmic. We are individually and collectively absorbing a lot of karma right now. I, as you all know, if you watched Decoding, our, our first One World Synchronicity when it comes to COVID-19, this is not an accident. This is a synchronistic fate to destiny event, this pandemic. Is it any wonder, just one thread um, amongst many, and I certainly can never call, cover all the karmic threads here, but is it any, any wonder that in an age where psychic viruses proliferate now and in a world that's gone viral with them, that we as a world then also experience an actual virus physically that brings up and actually shines a light on the worst of the psychic viruses through conspiracy theory, through political tribalism, through spin and spell of media. You think that's an accident? You think you're not called right now to go, ooh, I better pay attention. What psychic viruses do I have? You know, where have they corrupted my mind? I want you to understand something about the nature of corruption. We are too many generations now removed from the Holocaust and World War II. Most people that lived through that era that used their voices to educate us on how that all came to be have died. But what I do know, because I'm a, someone who studied this and spent time in Germany and you know, what I do know about the Holocaust is that that kind of corruption that led to it didn't happen overnight. Corruption is not typically an overnight phenomena. It's slow. It's steady. So subtle that you don't even realize you're being corrupted. Someone who ends up in a full-blown cult, by the time the cult's got them and has corrupted their mind, it's too late. They don't even have a healthy mental reference point in which to, through which to evaluate how sick the thinking of the cult even is. It's their new reality. It's their new normal. So, when we... The, the only thing that will ever shake you out of that kind of corruption is your is karma. Is something happening that the sick thinking of the cult cannot explain away, cannot get ahead of, cannot spin and spell it to keep you in the spell of the cult. This is what I want to bring up as a first pass for you around where we are and you are. There are things happening in the world and you're part of it. There are things going on in which we are so sick, folks. We don't even call what's sick, sick. We call it alternative facts. We call it something else. This is where we are. So you have to go to your interior and you have to start to evaluate what are my alternative facts? What, you know, inner cable news channel do I turn tune into to keep my sick reality alive? Now, you don't have to do that at all. But karma will continue forward here and you will suffer and you will absorb it. It's just what's true. This isn't me being political. This is just what happens. The Germans at that time were otherwise loving. 
And yet, over a decade to 13 years of time, the corruption of the German psyche let them look the other way, guided them to look the other way, while Jews were being exterminated. So, this is just to land in some Scorpio reality here around corruption in your mind. Corruption tends to take time. Steady, focus, keeping someone in a psychic virus, and getting them to slowly erode. Now, you have to ask yourself some things to ping ping around to start to get that GPS for your soul in all of this. Because your mind is not, your mind is not, not going to help you here. Don't go there. It's likely very viral and corrupted. The whole culmination into this Mercury retrograde that I'm sensing and seeing is, yes, going to take into account the Aries Capricorn karma I talked about already, but it is going to deepen into new dynamics now. New things you didn't see are being offered about yourself about the nature of our collective reality, about the nature of how our minds are influenced, about the nature of how we share in psychic fields and territory with each other. And if you're an empathic soul, look alive. It's where you want to maybe reference my masterclass a little more during this retrograde. Because what we're going to see is this. Let me break it down archetypally. Remember, Aries, when it comes to karma, is about what initiates karma into, into play. Capricorn is about the manifestations of that karma, their manifested results. Scorpio. Scorpio is beginning to understand the emotional psychodynamics behind that karma. So if I wanted to take a Scorpio point of view into the Holocaust, which of course I've done numerous times, one thread I could see is this. The Germans were so beat down after World War I. This is, this is Scorpio talk. This is Scorpio looking. The German psyche was collapsed. It was also vulnerable. It had, let me say it a few different ways. The Germans had no esteem. None. Not only that, they barely had resources. The whole world was on their ass. And all they were getting from everyone was, you fucked up. You're going to pay. And that began to beat them down even more. So by the time Adolf Hitler came around, they were primed for some kind of savior. Someone to instill in them a sense of we're enough. Not only that, oh, you're going to tell us we are the superior race. We're in. More than enough superior race? Yes. When you... Start to look at yourself through this retrograde. You have to ask yourself, how are, we, how are you corrupted? What opens you to corruption? What is that in you? I just named something that's probably likely very true, and that is low worth. Feeling uh, victimized by systems or society. You can become vulnerable in those states to corruption. Now, when we're looking at karma, because this is about karma, you know, I, I'm, I'm starting to see that almost all retrogrades do this karmic inventory. You got to reverse engineer from the karma in your life back into how it got here, the archetypal dynamics involved, and that's what we're doing. So when you look at Scorpio and your karma, you go, okay, what shadow dynamics emotionally? are part of this karma. How did it, how did I co-create this? Perhaps obviously unconsciously. Now, there's one more archetype to get to and that's Libra. And the way that we begin to karmically understand through Libra is we start to look at how we relate to other people's and I most notably want to drill down on how you love. How do you love? How do you love people? How do you love yourself? 
Now, that's a much, in a way, darker question than you actually realize. Because the truth is, most of us love in very dark ways. We call it love. It's how we love. So for someone who's a bully, they love through intimidation. They love through emasculation, through violence. A white supremacist, a white supremacist loves through violence, through self-elevating ev- uh, because they're white. These are expressions of connection. Therefore, I'm going to say they're expressions of love. How do you love? And that's, that should go right to your soul. That question should take you down into Hades and right to your soul. Because that's exactly what I sense this Mercury retrograde is offering. Is okay. I want to know how you love. How is that expressed in connection? And let's go a step further. Not only that, how does how you love reveal the truth about your real values? Your real values, not the ones you tell yourself you have that are usually bullshit, but your real values. Do you love like a love rebel or mystical lover or shadow lover or perfectionist or political tribalist? How do you love? And coming back to the core, what is the karma for that? What is the karma for that? So we've got four archetypal forces active actually in this Mercury retrograde, Aries, Capricorn, Scorpio, and Libra. And I just went through each one karmically for you. And that brings me to this question. Now that I have said that, now that I've showed you, given you a little message from Hermes, from your potential, from your soul self, framed in the question, how do you love? What's the karma of how you love? And do you even know? Because here's the thing, your mind is probably so spun, viral, and sick that you actually can't answer that question yet. This is what the retrograde serves, is a way to understand so much. Why are you in certain dimensions of learning in your life? Why are you seemingly locked into this one classroom where the teacher is always a freaking vampire or a bully or uh, um, a dysfunctional adult? Why is it that that's the classroom you seem to be stuck in? What about our collective classrooms? This is it. Boom. So you do want to look at now, what are your themes? What are your themes in this retrograde? What's been setting up around the question, hmm, how do I love people? What's the karma of that kind of love? How do I express connection through relationship? What's the karma of that? Now, the compassionate side of this is that a lot of us, we we love from our survival archetypes of adaptation. We love from reaction. We love from low esteem. We love from uh, our perfectionism. We love from shame. You know, we love from these these darker parts of us, are these sad, wounded, um, in need of, of mystical love parts of us, such that it's made our mind so sick. We've never thought there could be a different kind of love. These are very powerful doors. 
very powerful doors. So I want you to spend some time feeling through all of these, looking through all of the stuff I've already said, begin, this is me, oh, this is the primer. Because when we get to part five, we, we go and be meeting up in Hades. <laughs> but for now, how do you love? Libra, one of its sub archetypes is the lover. It is the lover. But in this classroom of mine, this membership we're in, we go mystical. We just don't stay at, you know, level one lover. Oh no, baby. We're mystical lovers. We're love rebels. So that said, pivoting back through that question, this retrograde is going to have you absolutely take a deeper look at owning your Mars with the love rebel and mystical lover archetypes at your side. It's, it's a deepening of where we've already been. It just brings in a much more shrewd, psycho-spiritual, psychological, psycho-emotional level of understanding it all. You got to get into the shadow for that. So I gave you the five steps of a love rebellion. Well, they're going to be further clarified. And once again, step one, what are your values? This is, gonna, this is, the, this is the door into the underworld now. What are your values? It's a Libra question, actually. You know, when I brought up how the archetype of Libra stereotypally gets framed as being indecisive and this and that, one of the things a Libran classroom teaches you is that indecisiveness oftentimes is the byproduct of not actually knowing your values. I've seen in life that people who know their values, they don't have a hard time making choices most of the time. Now, certainly there's a time where you got to take in perspective, get all the information, suss things out before you make a major life decision. But if you know your, your core soul values, choices are like that. They can be, boom, of course I know what I'm choosing. Because this is what I actually value. And the choice one, choice two, choice two is the choice most aligned to that value. Done. Done. So... Venus anchors the values, Venus rules Libra. And let's bring back one of Venus, Venus's core teachings, and that is self-affirmation. You know, if we go to the Greek version of Venus, Aphrodite, this was a goddess that was all about her. If I'm having sex with you as Aphrodite, it's for my pleasure. I don't care if you like it or not, it's about me. You know? <laughs> She didn't fuck around. She blinds you if you didn't think she was beautiful. If you didn't, if she wasn't the, you know, the goddess in the room you went to, she wasn't playing around. So there's something to be said about this is a time also of, you know, think about it this way. I mean, if you choose, um, if you love in a certain way, depending on how you're loving, you may, you may not actually experience true self-affirmation. If you've got somewhere in your life where you've elevated something into really a false God. You got to ask yourself, does the expression of devotion or love I give to this actually affirm me, affirm my soul esteem, affirm my core worthiness? Or is there some catch in here, some shadow reinforcement of how worthless I am? actually feel I am. Therefore, I need the artifice of value by elevating myself above other people or getting something from other people in a way that isn't based on my real longing and true authentic needs. Now, this is something you can position in yourself 
as a way to start evaluating the retrograde for you, for yourself, but also take what I said and put it out to people you have relationships with. If you're a bully or if you're an abusive spouse, when you abuse your spouse, when you bully people, you're not affirming yourself. There's no self, self-affirmation at all. When you're in shadow rescuer missions, when you're in codependent empath missions, you don't affirm yourself. You're not operating from a soul-based, soul-esteemed self-affirmation system at all. It's a system, rather, that is more about your shadow survival archetypes of adaptation doing what they do. It's just technically that clear. So, what are your soul's core values? And as soon as I say the word soul, let me tell you some things that should drop off the radar. Being a Democrat, being a Republican, being anything political should drop off the radar. Uh, A lot should drop off. Being male, female, gay, straight. This, This is all costuming. And not that there's anything right or wrong with it. We came to the costume party. It's part of our soul contract. But why did we come to the costume party? What what did we come to learn and create? Nah. It's not about making the costume party right or wrong. It's rather, how do I move in the world of costuming? And does what I wear reflect my truth? And what is my truth? And does what I wear allow more mystical love to flow in this life or or not. So what I've been doing so far is I'm I'm beginning to lay down the coordinates of your upcoming and current transformation through this retrograde uh, cycle. And you know, I like to ping, I like to trigger, I like to put things down. This is shadow work. Baby, this is get you down to Hades time. Let me just re- recruit that back into the room for this sort of uh, material. This should be dis- this should be uncomfortable. It should give you pause. It should, I would hope, activate reflection. If it's not doing that, I'd be curious as to why. So, as we journey into this. This particular part, I wanted to lay down the stats, right? The dates, we got that done. And I also want to just give you a little bit more around the Lib- Libra archetype and the Scorpio archetype. Now, I've already taught a, a little bit here about Libra, but let's go a little deeper. And let's look at this in sequence, you know, coming back to astrological archetypal sequencing. You go from Virgo into Libra. Libra into Scorpio, Scorpio into Sagittarius. That's the sequence. So we're going to start here at Libra. And I want you to image that when you get to the Libra classroom, it's a classroom of relating. It's a classroom of meeting others through personal relationships of all varieties. It's a classroom where you also are more meeting the public as well, if you will. Your your system, your psyche, who you are thus far now is taken to the streets of the public domain in which you encounter people. So the dance of uh, the archetypal dance and the archetypal opportunity within Libra is to learn through relationship. Relationship itself as an archetypal container of growth. Now, here's what you want to look at. And this does apply to this retrograde. If Libra is where we meet others in personal relationships, where we begin to relate, what exactly is meeting someone else? What in you is relating? What in you is in relationship to someone else? What's meeting someone else in you? Well, 
riff around here and give you some starting points to answer that question. It's a question you're going to want to really sit with as you get deeper into Hades during this retrograde. Because when we meet anybody, we meet their light and we meet their shadow. We meet their history. We meet their vulnerabilities and insecurities. We meet their survival archetypes of adaptation. We meet their soul. We meet their projections and self-created self-image. We meet their personality, their heart. We meet their mind, etc., etc. So when you meet someone, all those parts I just named are meeting them. Now, why that's such a great way to anchor into this retrograde is that we are going to be asked and are being asked, what parts of me do I love through, relate through? What in me meets the world? And what in the world meets me? This is where we begin to get clear on who we are, the, the nat- our own nature. And this is where a shadow process is absolutely essential. Now, I just want to thread that to Scorpio real quick, and I'm gonna, then I'm going to come back right back to Libra. This is where the sequence of Libra goes to Scorpio. Because what happens is you get into relationships with people. You do indeed meet their shadow as your shadow meets them. And then now you just walked into Scorpio. And in Scorpio, you what, what happens when you meet someone's shadow? When you get in a relationship, what happens is you activate emotions. You activate the emotional part of your psyche. You activate all of your... Uh, Um, fears of abandonment, fears of intimacy, fears of fusing emotionally with someone. This is all of Scorpio. Because you are fusing with whomever you're in relationship with. And you're, you're fusing with the holographic nature of who they are. So yes, indeed, you're, you're melding shadows with people and light, of course, and everything. Now, depending on the relationship that you're in, you will meet you know, different parts of people in different relational containers. So as you meet me here, and I am, if you will, the guide and teacher, you're meeting my guide archetype, you're meeting my teacher archetype, and I am meeting you as a student, as a Uh, someone who is seeking spiritual direction, as a traveler, as a journeyer, as a seeker. So in, in all of that, we are in a process of holistic healing, in a process of seeking, discovering, journeying, awakening. Now, take what I just said and go through all your relationships. What do you meet in your, perhaps, spouse your best friend, your frenemy, <laughs> your uh, co-workers. What parts meet each other? You will you can't opt out of, of the phenomena of all of you meeting people in some form or other. What you can do is consciously manage it. That is what I think this retrograde begins to offer as a necessity for our times. 